album, and welcome to another horror of review. Right, here we go. It is time. <clears throat> Two things. After yesterday's serving of schlop, what I done was I had to just watch this movie. Um, I had a plan for the night anyway, but normally what I try and do is watch the movie and then go live almost straight after just so not just the plot but the experience of watching the movie still fresh in my head so when i give a live stream it's as if i walked out of the you know the cinema or you know if sat and watched the gallery just start talking about it it's that kind of idea but last night i just had to watch something after that other one and i can remember i've reviewed slumber party massacre one and two <laughs> so it only made sense that i advise you around to finishing off the trilogy <sighs> what a disappointment um at this stage this is beat for beat um the same as part two part one was an original fun movie yes cheesy but it had charm to it and it worked two was a you know at least the tribe of part two to have it a link between the first one with the younger sister carrying on that was cool. But then the driller killer was just some random person that made no sense. This version, they're not even trying. Oh, chat started already. <laughs> even Chris. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, as much as I was disappointed with this movie, God, uh, uh, it's better. Better watching that. You know, better than you know than watching that other thing. That was just horrendous. But still, God, they're not even trying at this point. I looked into them, three different directors, so there's no coherent vision, probably, and it's just a classic case of, you know, back in the 80s, 90s, and straight to the DVD sequels. What this reminds me of, if you remember the movie um, Wild Things, and for those of you who don't know, they made about three sequels to it, and it's like, oh, the audience is like that scene. We'll put this scene on it, and it's so shoehorned and yeah, you know, like I'll, I'll not spend too long on this one because there's not really much to talk about. But we start off um, playing volleyball because you know that's what kids do. They're playing volleyball, and of course you've got the beach weirdo. So they've hammed up the number of weirdos. Do they have a weirdo in the second one? How do we own the first one to deflect from the driller? You know, to make you think it was a driller killer, yet they already said that he had escaped from the mental sound. So in the first movie, there was a reason. He's already established in the lore, if you put it that way, you know the story, that this person that killed before escaped from sound, so obviously gonna reprise his uh role. And that was cool. And the the creepy neighbor in the first one was more of a distraction, but we didn't, you know, we didn't know, or we didn't really mind because we'd seen the killer, we kind of knew who it was. Um, second one was just, I don't know what the second one was, to be honest. I guess apart from trying to continue on the story, the killer made no sense. And it's like I tried to go a different direction and just failed. This one, you already know like it's paint by numbers the the weirdos there but you know it's not the weirdo and if you don't figure out ken's the killer in the first 20 seconds because they follow the same beats as the second movie then i don't want to tell you you know you need to watch more movies and <laughs> spend a bit of time <laughs> looking at plots so there's a big neon saying going it's him so there's no surprises in this movie of course, Jackie's the main character in this, and she's having a slumber party. Blah, 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 blah. Her parents are moving. Blah, 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 blah. We've got some have boyfriends, some don't. The boys are going to follow them. Blah, 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 blah. Um, then we we'll have uh, one of them goes to a car. It's the first victim, exactly the same as the first one except instead of a van it's a car in broad daylight 
blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this is going to be my review, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, you just get, just get the same story from one and two. And just, here it is again. What is, what's a shame though is other franchises manage it. They've managed to, and I think Friday the 13th is the best example of their decatur doesn't say much, do anything, just a big dude in the suit, in a mask, and yet the managed to make that series inventive. This, oh God, do you know even how bad it is? If you see the thumbnail, right, they're not even the actresses in the movie. That's how bad this is. That's how much they don't care. Right? They're not even in the movie. They're just three random like pinup models for the poster. This is how much of a shit they do not give. No, they didn't pull um the pillow fought in the second one. So you need to watch part two for the pillow fight. This just had a generic strip tease because that's what you do when you're writing your mates. Apparently one or two of you get up and strip tease the because yeah, whatever. Um and it really was, oh these are gonna be dumb men and women who like boobs, so let's just give them boobs. And it was just you can almost go, okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, strip scene. Legit. It was that predictable and by the numbers. I think what had the charm of the first one, yeah, there was loads of nudity in it, but it was woven into the story. And yeah, there was titillation, but it wasn't just there as in, oh, here, we, we like this, so we'll, we'll put it in front of you. The, the cheese getting up, getting ready, first bit, and then the shower scene and stuff, you know. It all made sense for a cheesy slasher movie, you know. It didn't, you didn't feel like it was, Ugh. The second one, very forced. This one, just, uh, like, you don't, you, you don't even get excited, honestly. Um, you need to leave it alone for a year or two to get excited about this stuff. There's just no delusion because it's just shoehorned in. And you can kind of tell the director just didn't give a toss. Like, okay, the the executives say we'll have to have this in. Okay. And there it is. Right. I've written it. Next one. Um, yeah. And that's what it does. It just goes through the exact same story. And, and I don't know. There's, there's plenty you can do. Like I said, a wee bit of imagination. You can twist things around, different kills, different locations. You can always have it up. Missed them. They. <sighs> Jackie invites them all around to her parents' house because they're away for the weekend, looking at a new house because she's moving. She's got a barbecue at the back, but. Uh, somebody forgot to bring the burgers because that's organized. At least there wasn't as much sugar in this one. I remember watching the first one and they were doing that um, diluted stuff. And I watched the girl on that one dunk half a bag of sugar in. And I'm just like, Ugh! you know, that was like uh, horrendous. <laughs> um, but there's not a lot, even, the, you know, even doing that, that sort of stuff. There's nothing here. And then everyone just starts, the boys sneak in, they're watching, they turn up a mask, they go booga, booga, booga. Then they're all sitting together. And then people start getting off. That's it. <sighs> Why are they trying, right? Then they have a neighbor. This one has a neighbor too. And he's got a telescope and he's spying on them and he's ringing them. And he was in the hole. I want to look, I want to buy your house. My accountant says I have to buy something. <laughs> like, what the hell is this? We know it's not you. Go away. Weirdo. And of course, golf kid, you know, he's sitting staring at them. 
then he disappears. Then one of them drops her book, so he turns up. And of course, he doesn't go to the front door and just go, ding dong, find your book. No, he's going to sneak in the back to return it. Because, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, like, trying to, like, with no cans of color. Like, we've, we've seen two of these movies already, and you're not being in any way imaginative. We know from like the first 20 seconds, oh, here's somebody that's just magically appeared and seen again, and nobody else knows. And he's good looking, just like the guy in the second one. Yeah, it has to be him. Um, but he's playing the game right up until the uh, sex scene with. Who did he have sex with? It wasn't Jackie, was it? Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, there's a bit of a. Oh, yeah, someone else. Yeah, because the other boys get pissed off or get thrown out of the house one by his day, and then one tries to come back and he gets impaled with a the for sale sign because that's it's just beat for beat. Everyone, anyone's outside and about gets wiped out. Um, there's sort of funny, see, there's this um, like awkward kid guy, you know, it's like one of the girls, and he's he's trying to get Lana into the house so. He meets the pizza girl, the pizza delivery girl, and he offers her money to swap shirts with her and, you know, let him deliver the pizzas. And then he does this whole thing. Oh, turn away. I don't want you to see me undress. You know, uh, right, okay. Might have been funny at the time if you're 12, but, yeah. This movie's just already so boring that that one remotely funny scene, you know, turning the tables sort of thing, um, yeah, it didn't work. And then the pizza girl gets off, which is weird because she just let her go. And then she wouldn't be missing because obviously it doesn't matter who you are if you're like on a job and you're on the clock and you're not delivering stuff, that's, your boss is going to go looking for you. Not because of any <laughs> liking for you, just because you're costing company money. Um, oh, it's Julia. Oh, that's right, because she, um, she's the one that approached them, and she knew him from before, or something like that. No, really contrived um, thing. Um, yeah, the plug-in, the corded plug-in vibrator. Yeah, okay, so apparently that was a thing. Like, not very discreet, but there you go. Um, I'm sure batteries were available in the 90s. <laughs> or is this like uh, Super Rabbit 9000 that had, you know, need more 9 volts? Don't know. But yeah, um, he, sh those two get jiggy with it. But he can't do the finish of the task. So straight away, you know, oh, right, I'm blah, 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 blah. That's it. Sex and frustration. Blah, that's why he's a killer. You just, you know, I mean, you're, you're just seeing it coming on. Then she goes for a bath. And then he kills her with a vibrator by plugging it and dropping it in the water. Because this thing is that powerful. That one plugged in, you know, with the electric current. Just, okay. No hair dryers. Like, a bunch of girls in the house, no hair dryers. Those things are... Uh, I don't know. Um, I suppose it was supposed to be funny. Or, you know, thing is, because it's so boring, there's no titillation in this movie. None at all. It's just blah. And then he proceeds just to basically go through the house and go through the motions. I find weird dude in the cellar. Of course, because it wasn't weird dude. I don't know what happened. In, oh, the neighbor called the police. So he knows something's going on, and then he called the police. So it wasn't him. Like we all knew. And then oh, we get the reveal of Ken and the where did they go to a builder jar or something? They went to find something. <laughs> yeah, fucking um, it's a daft movie. I, I don't know what, you know, and that's saying it, like, it's not meant to be a take seriously franchise. It's supposed to be a fun franchise, and there's no fun in it. I think that's my problem. This is supposed to be a fun, get popcorn, go hee 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 hee, 
and have a good time and there's absolutely no fun in this whatsoever because there was no imagination like all two was a few tweaks you know for an ongoing series and yada 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 stuff happens i don't care i was kind of sleepwalking through this after the disappointment of the movie I watched before, and then this, you know, two in a row, I'm surprised I made it to the end. Uh, what I do for this channel, eh? Hey? The bit that gets me, though, is when he reveals himself and then he goes um, buck metal around the house. They're all in a group. You all run off different directions. And then one of the girls has got about a spunk to her, so she throws bleach on him like she dilutes the bleach first and throws it on him instead of like the full bottle like of undiluted bleach which I think do a bit more damage but hey who am I um I only got a level chemistry <laughs> um but they, they don't team up they team up briefly they get the but he's blinded and going about the place. They'll get brave and start teaming up and use volleyball now as a to catch him. Do you know what? What they should have done was took these girls and put them in the Beaster Bunny movie. They'd have done a better job and then put the dog catchers in this movie. And I think it would have made a bit you've got two better movies out of it. There you go. There's my I fixed it. Sorted. If you had to put all the dog catchers yet in this one. And then uh, what do you call it? Drummer killer and psycho dog catcher could have played off against each other. There you go, job done. And these girls, they're just so hapless. And I get in these nineties, they haven't really developed that sort of like digital camera one really thing. I know you have to move slow for the camera, or else you lose the action. But this is ridiculous ridiculously painstakingly slow just to the point of farce and they've had more than enough opportunities to team up and they've got weapons and they don't use the weapons you know they've cast iron pokers volleyball nets they've got bats of all sorts of stuff <sighs> well, i don't know how to a flipping uh what do you call it thing for short harpoon gun Manages to fluff up that, and it's like a close point blank range. And even when they do it, they like shoot once and then they're like, ah, and run off. And then the ridiculous, he blocks, he blocks the door with a dining room table. And they all make a big thing of climbing over a dining room table to get out an open front door. And one's crawling under it. It's like, really? This is just <laughs> uh, absolute farce. The bit that really annoyed me was um, it was the last kill. <sighs> Who is it? Um... Maria. <clears throat> Maria, I liked her character. But then this is the, the only other nudie scene in this. Um, she starts the whole, oh, yeah, talking to him. And then she's like, oh, you can do anything you want. We just let me live, sort of thing. And then just sets herself up to get killed. While the other two stood and watched from, like, there. Like, she's in the kitchen on the floor with him on top of her. Those two are standing within eye shot with weapons. And they let this whole scene play out. Even the bit where, and remember I mentioned slow moving for the camera, like the boar is slow. Then they wait till he kills her. <laughs> Stand like, oh, right, she's dead now, we can run. And you're like, what the hell is this? <sighs> God. Um, Blah, 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 blah. And then we get the reveal that Ken is um, the original driller killer's nephew who abused him, apparently. You know, it was just so trite, 
so trite, so awful, so weak of a plot point to tie the this guy into the, I don't think he even tried in the second one. They didn't even try to um, tie the other guy in. They just had him and just being bonkers. They should have picked one. Right, what they should have done with this, because they kill him eventually, just as the police are politely knocking on the door, despite a neighbour saying, there's stuff going down and there's bodies everywhere, like, not just inside the house, but outside the house on the lawn, just they're left all over the place. <laughs> the police come and go, hello, at the end of the movie, and you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah, um, there is such, it's, it's a, it really is a dice roll every time. Every time you, you pick one of these movies, it, it is a dice roll. If it's either going to be great, middling, or terrible. And you don't mind if it's great or terrible, at least you're getting a reaction. Do you know what I mean? But this is just bland. That's the problem. It's just like, nah. Like, I've already forgotten about it. Um, I don't think even if I had to watch it before coming on, I don't remember much because there's no plot. I just I'm actually remembering more about the first two movies because I see the repeat. You know, uh, no need. Um, but yeah, um, really disappointing. Did they need to make a third one? No. Did they need to make a second one? No. We should have. Had drummer killer the same character throughout. Simple. But like Michael Myers, you know, can't be killed and Jason just they can't be killed every time you think you've killed them. That's it. You know, they pop back up, they disappear and returns. I like the drummer killer out of the second one better. He was fun. He was like a Freddy Krueger esque sort of drummer killer. If they had him in the first one and carried on, uh, yeah, that would have, this would have been amazingly just fun, cheesy, Attack of the Color Tomatoes type franchise. I need to look that up. That's going to be on my list. I need to revisit that. Those movies. Was there three of those? There's definitely two. I need to revisit those because they were just cheesy, cheesy hells, fun as anything. Um, I need to revisit Toxic Avenger because um, Dick put it in my mind again when he saw his movie. I was like, yeah, I need to revisit that. Now, they're fun movies. I mean, there's a sense of fun and cheeky nudges as well, but this, God, it was just blah, just nah. Yeah, okay, I'm boring myself. I don't know how you guys are feeling, but I'm boring myself talking about this now. <laughs> just um, absolutely pointed. What was it? $350,000 budget. And it made 1.2 million. How does that happen? Did this go in the cinemas? It was a limited release. So they give it a limited release, put it on the VHS, and made 1.2 million. Holy crap, this is a successful movie. I could get it if it was in part two and everyone like jumped into the you know the movie theaters after the first one. That's a better return on investment than three quarters of the MCU and ninety percent of the Star Wars right now and a hundred percent of DC. That return on investment is blows. Other, you know, made all the big budget franchises out of the water. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh god, this us. I don't know, man. I I should have um, got myself in the cast and couch a couple of times, you know, and worked my way up into Hollywood. Moved over to Hollywood when I was like young and. Because like you can just put it, you can do anything without actually having to work. It's amazing. 
It's actually worse than the civil service. I thought they were lazy there, but oh my god, um, yeah, Hollywood just takes it to another level. Because I think this was like I mean, New Concord, I'm not familiar with them. Um, probably gone now, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, I could, like I said, I could picture this being wildly successful, it had it been part two, but anyone who's seen part one and part two would be like, eh, what do I do with this one? And then, God. No way they enjoyed that. I don't know. It was the 90s. 90s was a strange and fun time. It was like the, we had the glory days of, uh, like the 80s, and then the 90s became this strange thing off the back of the 80s. And then uh, I think that's when we started heading downhill into 90s had its own quirkiness. And then we got into the 2000s, things just don't know what happened. No, that was it. Just the three were made. Only the three. Um, I think after this one, the kind of like, where, where can you go with this? Does he have a cousin next? Um, I suppose that's where the Puppet Master series comes in really well because there's absolutely no continuity whatsoever between the movies, and they don't care. <laughs> um, they kind of try and tie it up the end. I need to watch the other. Uh, what have I got? I've got five left to watch. <clears throat> Need to squeeze them in sometime. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay, I'll wrap it up there. So tomorrow I'm watching It Came From Somewhere. I'm actually nervous about watching this, I'll not lie. Because I've been talking about this movie for close to a year, I think. Because I spoke to Anne and Steve and Brian initially. When was that? About six months ago, at least longer probably and then um, I spoke to him again a couple of weeks ago and uh, Magdalene is in this one one of the actresses I spoke to so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be really nervous about watching this because I, I don't want to not like it <laughs> and the, the the trailer that was fun um but yeah tune in tomorrow because <clears throat> I'm biting a bit of watching the movie and obviously I'll give an honest review I'm not gonna you know as much as I love them guys, they're a great laugh to talk to, and that that's what I'm here for, you know, to uh, give an honest review of the movie, so uh, we'll have a crack at that. Um, I can't be any worse than this. At least them guys have a bit of heart in them, so it should be a good time. So there you go. We'll wrap that up there. Um, pause note, and if you can, come in tomorrow, <laughs> and we'll see how this goes. So until then, keep it creepy, keep it horrific.